Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Imagine being among an enthusiastic audience in about 16,000 capacity cinema hall, filled to the brim, waiting for the most popular female star of an era to incite your ecstasy, only to hear behind-the-scene gossip that she is not interested in performing. Being a celeb yourself, you go backstage and ask if she does not understand the kind of success the show will give her, and she responded, Do you think I want success? Tuesday Weld in her sultry talent shocked fans when she ditched juicy roles to fulfil personal dreams. Why Tuesday Weld never wore underwear? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Meet Tuesday Weld, the American beauty who came, saw and celebrated Hollywood, but ran away when Hollywood was celebrating her. Where is Tuesday Weld? Looking for Mr. Goodbar, star? I have not seen or heard about her recently. Is she hiding somewhere? The lady who also fascinated the likes of Elvis Presley. Could someone tell Weld that her beloved fans love her much, especially her beautiful face? and the now-defunct Tuesday Weld's local fan club wishes her well. I guess you still remember Weld, that finest American actress who became infamously famous in the 1960s because of her easy-going lifestyle. At some point a popular media labelled her the archetypal nymphette, whatever that means. I once heard someone say Tuesday Weld may not be as ambitious as her Hollywood counterparts in the pursuit of fame, but that does not mean she hates success. Perhaps she needed something better than Hollywood success. It's a fact. It's a surprise. It's a tale of a teenager who survived the movie industry. Hollywood is an arena with a fantastic history of female child actresses who always grow faster than their age. Observers say they don't just grow, but grow up too fast because of the pressure to belong and achieve stardom as soon as possible. Weld, as a young beauty, had a similar but different story a unique one indeed. Some say her mess in scandals unsettles her fans more than her talent, but she was able to rise to fame with her formula that no one can take away from her. When Tuesday World exhibited her talent on The Dick Cavett Show, she was in her prime age of 28, a golden age for an actress to achieve or consolidate stardom. Actors in this age range are a combination of talent, training, experience and professionalism. That was why fans wanted to know why she made such a career choice against obvious opportunities. If you are still among those who still wonder why Tuesday Well did not hit it big, she has severally given answers to those questions. It sounded understandable. However, proponents of she would have been bigger and better with more of those roles will continue to wish that it was the other way. While it is often noble to take a bow when you think you can't, it becomes the opposite if your audience thinks you can. For youthful, high-potential and talented world, the story is a little more complicated than mere analysis. I heard someone describe Weld as a Hollywood poet of failure. As an ardent fan of this adorable lady, I intend to disagree. While we hope to hear from her again as soon as she deems fit, Well may have decided to have a well-deserved peace from probing eyes of the public contrary to an attempt to preserve the public's memory of her failure, as someone suggested. I still remember the moments that marked the beginning of her fame when she hit the entertainment industry in the 1950s sitcom The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. Many of us knew that she is a peculiar persona, contrary to public perception. Starting with a curious first name, Weld graced the American TV screen with her apple pie gazes that concealed dark and dangerous shadows. Movie makers weave her character around sex and violence as a powerful combo. She became a screen sensation through her obvious roles as an innocent yet immoral femme fatale. It was reported that Tuesday World was Kubrick's initially hand-picked choice for the Lolita role, but she turned down the offer. Afterward, she told fans that it was not mandatory for her to take the role. I didn't have to play it. We also pick up that Weld became the first choice for the leading lady roles in Bonnie and Clyde, Rosemary's Baby, Cactus Flower, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, plus True Grit. And what happened? It was said that at different times Weld had rejected the roles as they came. 
Unfortunately, she is today famous for what she lost in Hollywood rather than her modest achievement in the industry, with critics suggesting that she made poor career judgment. But for this special lady, it may not be all that glitters that is gold. Life and happiness supersedes fame. But whether that was the case is a subject for another day. Although it is not easy thinking about the career life of this wonderful lady without saying to yourself that she could have done better, this tiny kink of regret is the reason fans kept talking about her and wishing she came back to action. But sadly, age is no longer on her side. This great screen beauty with rugged talent is tipped to be the biggest star of her time, but it all became a mirage of an unfulfilled promise. Away from refusing juicy roles in classic films that would have enhanced her fortune, Well decided to follow a more decent path after fruition, though her legacy in the industry remained exceptional. The fascination is how she was able to forego her pin-up background and transition into natural talent. Those against thought she became a verifiable hot mess, an unlikely Hollywood survivor, by disappointing her fans. The debate will continue. Tuesday Weld was born Susan Kerr Weld to Lathrop Motley Weld and Yosin Balfour Kerr on Friday, August 27, 1943. This date, I hope you will disabuse your mind from thinking she is a Tuesday's baby. The joyous moment of her birth occurred in Manhattan. Funnily enough, while Weld's lineage was rich, her father ironically was poor. It caused her family to live a precarious lifestyle. Lathrop, her father, died when she was almost four years. Weld's mother, Yosin, somehow was estranged from her dead husband's family and forced to rely on herself financially. The issue was that the wealthy Welds wanted to take over her kids in the guise of providing a better future for the children, but she refused. She couldn't drop her three kids off to her husband's family, so they turned their back on her and the children. She noticed how pretty Weld was. An idea came to her mind to use her in entertainment because the bills were rising for her, and no help from anyone. This desperate time led to the modelling gig for little Tuesday Weld. As part of her vision for her young, beautiful daughter, Yosin quickly introduces Weld to modelling. Then, as a fresh artist's model, the infant Weld was said to have identified herself as Tutu, perhaps the way she was able to pronounce the fond name her mother normally used, a short form of Susan. She later turned it into Tuesday as a stage name. Months later, Petite Tuesday was hunted for a modelling job, to which her desperate mother would hurl her around from one location to another. She worked continually and became one of the best child models in New York City. It became a major source of income for her mother and two siblings. Fatigue soon surfaces on the little girl under the strain of continued work. She later revealed that she had some kind of breakdown at the age of nine, which she said disappointed Mama a great deal. But she returned to action the following year as she turned ten. Now in the entertainment scene, it is a matter of time before the eagle eyes of Hollywood executives spot her. She switched to acting and relocated to Los Angeles. By the time she was thirteen, she was already in Alfred Hitchcock's The Wrong Man, while she attended Hollywood Professional School. After a year, 20th Century Fox began campaigning for her as the next Marilyn Monroe. Then she was just a fourteen-year-old beauty. Studio talent promoters were said to have manufactured quotes that she never said, just to create awareness of the sultry image. For instance, I never wear underwear, it's much warmer with nothing on. And her mother would add to the curiosity by describing her in a newspaper review as tawny blonde all over. At Fox, Weld debuted with Rally Round the Flag Boys in 1958, where she had a minor but memorable role as Comfort Goodpasture, the beatnik minder who appreciates the happiness of adolescence transition to adult. Suddenly, she was seen yelling, I like boys. That role provided her an opportunity for the role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis' show. It became a huge success, with world turning instantly to the fantasy of millions of American young lads. Her popularity was so enormous that she became more important than the show. Acting roles were begging her to come, rather than Weld begging to be cast. That was how famous she had become. Weld's mother was in the background, choosing mainly top-billed pin-up roles for young Weld in B-movies, such as Sex Kittens Go to College, while her fame soared even higher. 
her image skyrocketed notoriously and got several affirmative publicity for her rough behaviour. A columnist ranted about her careless, scandalous lifestyle, describing her as a disgrace to the industry. She was on the loose at the time, with several scandals attached to her name, some of which included dating men old enough to be her grandfather, drinking heavily and smoking pot. She was also reported to have little courtesy with the journalist. Let me not bother you with her success stories, even though they had ups and downs as she marched on. The truth was that Weld became a sought-after actress with many producers planning their next movie with her character, even without her consent. At eighteen, Weld's fate was in her hand to decide as she was given a sizeable inheritance by her paternal grandmother. She became financially stable, but her choice of roles did not reflect anything better. She was seen in very crazy sexually explicit roles, sticking a knife into her sexbot image for... Lord Love a Duck in 1966, and so on. Was it the love of the dirty roles or something she enjoys about such actions? I guess no one can tell. Interestingly, 27 years old married Weld that had a daughter still went ahead to appear as a teenager in 1970 John Frankenheimer's I Walk the Line. That was how hot she was at the time. Things took an unfortunate dramatic turn for Weld after her five-year marriage with Claude Hartz ended in divorce. She felt hurt and into a deep depression, and later told fans that it appears the brighter you are, the more you are prone to fall in life. It was a moment of sad reflection of too many coincidences that befall Weld. Within a year I had a divorce, my car crumbled and my house burnt, she lamented in an interview, and she was left with nothing to hold on to. She, however, did not give up. Tuesday, at some point, took about five years off the theatrical movie scene to take care of the home end. Within the period, she got married to British comedian Dudley Moore and had a son. She resurfaces again in the movie scene with that provocative looking for Mr. Goodbar. Weld was extraordinary in that movie rendition, displaying outrageous, a divorce, heavy alcoholism, plus double abortions. She was indeed a moral mess in a production that got her the only Oscar nomination for her career, and subsequently re-established her as a choice performer. Perhaps roles became so overwhelming for her that she started turning them down, causing fans to go gaga about her decision and critics to question her choice. Tuesday Weld found herself making clarification and correcting the already formed impression about her either not willing to improve her career status or just not wanting success. It prompted her to boldly come out and ask that touching question, Do you think I want success? In her 1971 response to incessant rumours about her personal affairs, Weld stated that she rejected Bonnie and Clyde at the time, because it came when she had already decided to stay low and nurture her baby, and added that inside her she knew deep down that it was going to be a hit. She said the same fate troubled her during the time of Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. She could not do otherwise, even though they all looked very big. It reeked of success, she had said. Contrary to what some persons thought Weld said, that some of her actions may be self-destructive, but that does not mean that she does not take her chances. I liked taking chances in movies. I liked challenges. It's the reason she did even the unthinkable in films. Some analysts thought that Weld had some kind of a special strength, a kind of rawness that is believed to be very weak and delicate about her acting. Perhaps certain roles reminded her of something about herself. So far, Weld has been married three times, but her first marriage to Claude seemed like a big loss to her because of how she felt about it. Though she was given custody of Natasha, their daughter, with $100 monthly child support, Weld fingered her mother as a reason for that initial failure. She told an interviewer that her mother hated Claude and all the men around her and described her as a jealous lover. She hated all the men I'd ever been involved with, she had said. Weld thought that she did not live up to the expectation of her husband at the time and regretted some of the things she did professionally and privately. My life was probably wrong. What I should be was a housewife, and declared that her five years' marriage was just another of her mistakes. With gossip of her flirtations with men three times her age and a private life bedeviled with hints of obsession, sexual activity and family conflict, Weld acknowledges that she did not get things right somehow. 
As a 16-year-old movie starlet, she was once seen bravely walking into the lobby of the Beverly Wiltshire Hotel, probably an invitation, and asking to be allowed to see Elvis Presley in his room. The King, interestingly, desired her too. Though she is retired and far away from the movie scene, she is today a marvel because the contemporary generation refers to her name in several TV shows, indicating that her legacy is evergreen. Tuesday World was said to be the next Marilyn Monroe, but there were women to outperform her. Raquel Welsh replaced Marilyn Monroe? Watch this video.